Hey, what's up everybody? I am the Gerbil. Welcome back to tonight's video. Does Nisacron counter Pogglecron? Uh, before you say no, I want you to hear me out. There's a really good likelihood that a well-modded Ewok squad with Nisa can counter the Nisacron, no, the Pogglecron, excuse me. Um, am I going to commit to this? No, I am not. I am not. I need to test this a lot more, and sadly, there are so few people in our community who are willing to relic up their Ewoks to try this. But if you do jump over to swgoh.gg and you take a real hard look at the data from recent GACs, which of course is using Chirpacron, not Nisacron, you'll see that Nisa in 3v3, Chirpa with Nisa and Wicket is getting a 66% um, loss rate against Nest. Now that's significant because the reality is nobody really knows how to mod Nisa yet, and that includes me. I have been experimenting with offense, crit damage, high tenacity, high potency, uh, high health. Her kit is just an, an, like a who's who list of every stat on, on in a character, and it's really, really like interconnected to a lot of other Ewoks, so it's really, really hard to know. Likewise, um, Wampa only has about a 90% win rate now. Now, 90% is still a lot, but that does mean 1 in 10 Ewoks are beating Wampa, and two, one in three Ewok squads are beating Nest, and that that is a big change from where we were a couple weeks ago. Also, there's only like 1,700 Nisas out there in the wild with the, the Omicron, so there's very, very little data on that. So here's my thinking. If you mod Nisa for extremely high tenacity, uh, and you put her, not tenacity, sorry, potency. You mod her for extremely high potency and you put her on defense. She's going to destroy Wampa because she's going to go first in GAC. She's going to go first 100% in Territory Wars and she will stun Wampa. And then the Ewok train is going to go and they're going to destroy the Wampa. Likewise, um, I think that high tenacity Nisa is going to destroy Nest because Nest is not going to be able to well, no, let's back that up. Same, high potency. Why? She's gonna go first and she'll stun Nest. But you gotta get her potency up really high. And I'm talking like 150, 160, 170 range. And that, my friends, is doable. Anyway, let's check out some further evidence of the Nisa effect. What are you looking at here? Four vids simultaneously, gerbil? Yeah, and what's that Nisa? You pee pee on meta. I pee pee on your meta. All right, yeah, actually, sometimes you do, girl. So top left corner, we've got Darth Revan, and before you say that's not an optimal Darth Revan squad because it's got Darth Vader in there, I know. I'm limited to the opponents I have because this is an arena, which means no Nisacron, no Chirpacron, and of course, no Starkiller Crons, right? Uh, Starkiller, yeah, bottom right corner. Uh, top right, we got Gas. That is a Relic 8 Gas. Bottom left, we have Jedi Knight Luke. Uh, and, and that Jedi Knight Luke squad is notable that um, in that match, I'm using Ewok Scout, Wicket. I've got a triple attacker there. We got Nisa, Ewok Scout, and Wicket. And we just hammer through that squad really quick. So there is some absolute strategy that is required and different lineups that is kind of required here that will get you yield some very different results. And I've talked about these a lot in some other videos, uh, but suffice it to say, before you attempt this in GAC or something, you really, really do need to practice a little bit or at least watch up some vids and, and figure it out. For example, I'm just gonna go through one of these, for example, uh, I'll give you two actually. Against Darth Revan, it's actually not that hard to beat a Darth Revan squad, even with Malak there. The trick is you have to make sure Malak does not taunt, and if Sith Trooper is there with the auto taunt, you are in trouble, especially if you're not running Poplu, because Poplu will remove the taunt on his basic, but you gotta first do that. So the trick is opening up um, by attacking anybody calling Chirpa to assist from Poplo that gives him the turn meter to go second and then you use the swarm attack on Basil Shan and kill her before she does her blanket these buffs I'll cross your whole squad and then it's just off to the races for Darth Revan and you're out game over so you have to drop Basil Shan which can certainly be 
done. All right, see, we've already done it. We're still struggling here a little bit against Starkiller. Um, gas is sitting down for the umpteenth time. This is a Relic 8 gas. So the trick against gas, and the, the, there's a lot of RNG actually in going against gas here, but the, the trick against gas, of course, is doing whatever you can to whittle down Five's protection before you sit gas down. You need to be able to kill Five's as fast as possible as soon as gas sits, and then you have to take out Rex really quick. Uh, against Darth Revan also to back up over there, you normally want to use Wicket to put like Ewok Elder and Stealth if you're using him. Notice I'm not. The trick there is you got to use it on Chirpa to put him in Stealth so that Darth Revan can't target your leader. Uh, read the kit if you don't know why, but Darth Revan wants to hit the leaders. Anyway, so there we go, folks. We've just beat Darth Revan. We're about to be Gas. We've just beat Jedi Knight Luke. And Starkiller is saying goodnight in three, two, one, goodnight. All right, let's move on though to the main event, shall we? Does Nisakron defeat Pogglecron? So here's the a snapshot of one second left in my one and only attempt here. And these were really, really well modded Geonosians. Okay, they did not skimp on the mods here. So I think this is a really, really good example of what's viable. Uh, you will notice with one second left on the clock, my entire squad of, of Ewoks is sitting really well off. Overall, Lagre and Nisa are still at full health protection. The Bugs, on the other hand, have lost a member, even with the Pogglecron, and they are all down below half health. Um, so how do we get there? Let's check out the video, shall we? Uh, full disclosure, I am using a level 8 Datacron. The only thing, though, that honestly really matters, I think, is it is the 15% so I am walking into this with 60% bonus health and protection, but I'm honestly not sure that that's going to make or break this encounter. Um, so Nisa goes first, she gains critical chance up, critical damage up, and, and basically every time she attacks she's going to drop her cooldowns, so she's going to be able to spam her... her um, her specials and one of them will stun the target and it's an AoE attack. That's going to be really really useful as is Wicked's AoE here. So here's why I think I don't actually win this. See here she is, she's already going to use her special again. Um, I think that I, I have a couple misplays. I should have been spamming her AoE stunning down Geonosian Brute. Not that that really would have mattered, it's the AoE damage, we want to hit all the bugs. The second problem is that I went in here, I think, with the wrong lineup. While Logre is capable of dazing the enemy squad to prevent their swarm tactics, um, it didn't really happen. It, I mean, it, it almost never happened. I, I managed to to daze, I guess that soldier right there, but none of the others did it stick, which meant in this particular situation, either my potency was too low or their tenacity was too high, I don't know which. The fact is, Lagre just didn't really do much for us. He does have, uh, the, he, he spreads health up, which is nice, that definitely provided us some survivability, but the reality is I think Poplo here would have won the match. Why? Well, um, Poplo dispels on his basic. So 90% it feels of this match, I am just attacking the Brute because I couldn't get through him. I had to fight my way through the Brute, then I had to try to kill somebody, and of course they revive, and I have to kill him again because of the Pogglecron. And then all that happening, the Brute just keeps standing up. I also think I attacked some of the wrong targets. When the Brute did go away, I was going after Geonosian Brute Alpha, when I should have been going after Geonosian Spy. I figured that out way too late. Spy because he's a turn meter train ramp for the team, or possibly Poggle because he's got that Omicron. So if I had had Poplu instead of Logre right now, or heck, even instead of Ewok Elder, because while Elder is really, really useful for the turn meter, you can see he's not really doing much. He's mostly standing back, and his turn meter gains is very much RNG based. So by taking out Elder, we kind of reduce a little bit of variability, uh, maybe slower team, but we would be bypassing or removing the taunt on the Brute and taking out targets of opportunity much more efficiently. See, it's finally like two and a half minutes before I realize I'm not getting through that Relic 8 Geonosian Brood Alpha anytime soon. 
Um, the the Datacron here did now come into play. That's the I think the only time that we're going to get a character in trouble. That is uh, obviously Wicket. They have really, really been showing their love at killing Wicket here. So even if we had lost Wicket, we could have revived him with Elder. So I know I'm going back and forth. Who do I take out? Elder, who do I take out? Logre. I really don't know. I think from this particular example, Logre is the least effective because once again, there's the mass uh, days, and it didn't really land. Brood Alpha didn't get dazed. Stun Fact didn't get dazed. We did get her over there in Poggle, but you know, Poggle's going to cleanse, I think. Um, and again, I used Nisa wrong. How did I mod Nisa for this event? She was modded for super high potency, like extremely high potency. If I had put high high offense on her um i think high offense I, I think she would have been more effective while she's not delivering an insane amount of damage her aoe is working quite effectively see there goes there goes scout so like here she hit for 16 16 and 16 so that's forty eight thousand damage you, you can't uh, deny that that's pretty good here's another 21 21 basically 31 on the primary target so instead of triple potency mod sets if i had gone offense or crit damage sets with maximum offense secondaries i really believe that this really really well modded geonosian squad would have fallen pretty quickly so guess what i'm going to be trying in the next territory war i forgot about this actually and put them on defense today so oops but that's right I'm going to be trying this deliberately hunting Chios next time, and I'll give you an update on my Discord channel. Check it out. Link down below in the description. Anyway, folks, I'm not just trying to preach my love of Ewoks. You know I love Ewoks, but I think that, seriously, if you can be Gas, Darth Revan, again, there's some RNG here, and you got to learn how to do it, but if you can be Poggle, Kron, Geos, and Territory Wars, Gas, Darth Revan, Jedi Knight, Luke, and more, and GAC, and you can hold against Nest, then I think people should probably revisit whether or not they're worth farming. Just my humble opinion. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hit that like and subscribe, please. Less than like a fourth of you watching probably have subbed. Hit that button. I do appreciate it. And I will catch you all later on the holotables. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.